Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna make this sparkly, glitzy birthday card, and uh, it's super fun, and we're gonna do a lot of stamping techniques that I think you'll enjoy, especially if you happen to have some water-based markers. I'm gonna use the Spectrum Aquas today, but if you don't have these, go ahead and use your Crayola or Tombow or Memento or La Plume, whatever you have that's water-based, not alcohol-based. We're also gonna use some photo paper, and um, sometimes I get asked whether you can use photo paper in lieu of glossy cardstock, and in this case you can. We're gonna start off by um, making our background and we're gonna work right on our card base and this is just one of those um, five by seven uh, multi pack card bases you can get at the craft store and I've got my um, stamp we're gonna use right here it is by Carmen's Veranda which is um, owned by Lost Coast Designs the same person that owns Lost Coast Designs they recently acquired that company um, this year, last year, this year, not too long ago. And um, so now it's kind of exciting because we have these wonderful stamps too. I'm using a Kaleida Color ink pad, which is a rainbow ink pad. And actually, if you don't have this, you can do a regular ink pad or you could use your markers to ink this up. It's completely up to you. This is just a little quicker this way. I set it on a, um, a block. I haven't gotten around to mounting any of my new Carmen Veranda stamps. I got the stamp show. Um, so I'm just kind of, you could do this on the edge of a table or, or a block and what I did is just shoved it over so I could get this inked up because these Kaleida color pads have this little tab here and what this is for is so when you store it or if you're going to use like alphabet stamps or something you can slide it apart. I've had these ink pads for years and years and they're still growing strong. I think they're a real uh, fun value because it's like you get five colors for the price of one. So I, I really like them. Um, well, they're more expensive than a regular ink pad, but you know what I mean. So because this card base is bigger than um, than my stamp, I'm gonna have to like stamp it a couple times. And what I'm gonna do is just place that down like that. And then I'm just gonna grab a piece of scrap paper and I'm gonna rub over it. This was a kind of a working failed attempt here. So I'm like, well, might as well use it for something. Okay, so I've got half of it stamped. You can see how beautifully that stamps. I'm gonna ink it up one more time. I'm gonna do the same method with my stamp block in my ink pad. Just always remember with these inks to store them apart like that, okay? And push them together to stamp. You could also use a brayer, like if I didn't have an, uh, a mounting block there to put underneath my stamp, I could use a brayer to ink up with this, um, this ink pad and do it the same exact way. So there's there's many ways to uh, to get ink on that stamp. If you don't have exactly what I have, improvise with what you have. And again, opening them up so that I can store it. Okay, so I'm gonna set this down there. I wanna make sure my feathers are going the same direction. And if I get a little overlap, that's fine. I just don't wanna have a gap with no color on it. Actually, that's not really that bad of a background. I'm looking at that one that I was playing with earlier. It was the last night I was working in my studio and it was just like nothing was happening. I just couldn't get anything to, to go. And then, but then this morning when I looked at my card, I was like, you know what? That's not bad. That's actually pretty nice. Um, and then I thought I wanted to add a little bit of shimmer to this background. So what I'm gonna do is use this um, shimmer spray. This happens to be shimmer spritz. Doesn't matter, use whatever you have. It's, this isn't all that shimmery I find, probably because it's in a little bottle and it, they can't make it too shimmery or it would clog but I'm gonna give it a couple sprays not too much because this stuff is pretty light so you can see there's not much shimmer to that yet but what I'm gonna do is use a sponge and some metallic chalk okay this is pan pastel but you could use whatever you have and I'm just gonna go ahead and wipe over it a little bit to give it a little bit of sheen I only have to do the edges because that's all you're gonna see because this is just our matting layer and look, I, that's pan pastel, but I also have these pebble chalks. I'll just show you these. These are, these are fine if you don't have the pan pastels. I think, you know, if you're going to be doing a lot of chalking and stuff, the pan pastels are actually a little bit more cost effective, but they're just kind of expensive to get into. So yeah, these pebbles work just as well. They just don't, you just don't have as much product in there, but use what you have. Don't feel like you have to run out and get pan pastels because that's what I'm using. I am a little bit of a art supply junkie, I think. <laughs> I just, I love to try it and uh, and I do paintings with them as well. So having the larger pans is um, useful to me, but it might not be so useful to you. So, you know, disclaimer, disclaimer. So I'm not worried about the middle because that's not gonna be seen. I'm gonna set this aside to dry. 
and like I got passed on my hand from the uh, from the other background. Um, and then we're gonna do some stamping on some glossy photo paper. And what did I do with that? Here we go. So we're gonna do a couple different things. So the sentiment, I've already cut mine out, but I'm gonna show you how I stamped it. This is just a wood block fed it forever. I believe it's from Stampin' Up. Um, my, I'm pretty sure it's from Stampin' Up because I don't have too many wood mounted stamps, but I do like my sentiments to be wood mounted. So I'm going in and adding some of this uh, Kingfisher Blue. And I love these markers. I will warn you if you're gonna do a lot of the uh, inking up of rubber stamps, it will wear your tips quicker than just using them like markers. Um, so I just wanted to warn you, they are kind of a fat tip and not the finest tip anyway, but they do have a fine tip end for journaling and whatnot. So I've added those three colors. I'm actually going to add a little brown. This is a technique I learned from um, Lisa over at Local King Rubber Stamps. Good reason to go to a stamp show because you always learn some really cool new stuff. And look how pretty that is. So I just love that multi-tone. It's simple. And then I'll just, I just die cut it with a simple, inexpensive Darice die. Um, so I'm going to set that aside and get a fresh piece of, actually, you know what? We can do the peacock right on this. I'm going to be cutting that out anyway. And I've got this right here. Make sure I have room for her. Yep, I will. Okay. So here I'm going to use these same colors. So I've got coordinating colors here. Now, a lot of people, like if you're getting into stamping, I'm going to be doing a brand new series called Stamp School. It's geared to the beginners out there because it can be overwhelming to uh, figure out where to start when you're, um, when you want to get into stamping, you don't want to buy the wrong thing and it's so expensive to begin. Um, so I'm doing a stamp school video series that hopefully will help you. The cool thing about having watercolor markers is that each marker is like its own stamp pad, kind of. So you can really do a lot with markers. You know, when stamp pads, you know, are, you know, five or six bucks a pop, you can really, you know, save yourself some money by using the markers. I'm adding a little bit of this blue. And I'm going to do some brown in here. Peacocks have brown on their feathers. I'm just kind of willy-nilly dabbing in some brown. So it doesn't have to take you forever. And now these, this is a rocking mount. I really like these because I don't have any cushion down on my table and I haven't mounted these stamps yet. So they don't have any cushion on them. So I want to make sure I'm going to get a good impression. Make sure I have room on my paper. And I'm going <sighs> to breathe in my stamp to moisten it with all my hot air. And... With these, you can either roll them towards you or against you. Just make sure you put some pressure on in the middle and you get a really good impression. So that is my peacock. And um, I'm going to cut that out with scissors since I don't have a die to go with this. The uh, Carmen's Veranda stamp line has been around for a while. There are not dies to go with them. But look how I'm going to cut it. And this is very forgiving. I'm going to cut it with like a 16th or an 8th. Uh, what is that? About an 8th or 16th of an inch border. I'm going to cut it with enough of a border that I don't have to get in and around those feet. So this isn't really fussy cutting. It's kind of like the most unfussy cut of cutting. I don't have too many dies that um, that match stamps. Actually, um, I got kind of lucky. Uh, awesome viewer Sherlock Haka sent me some goodies that she had uh, doubles of. So we'll be using one of those dies today. I want to thank you so much for that, Sherlock. And uh, that's her screen name, not a real name. <laughs> it's kind of a cool screen name, though. Um, so I just wanted to give a shout out to her because that was an awfully nice surprise to come home to. But I often will just cut stuff out by hand because um, I find it's a little bit quicker than sifting through stuff. But a lot of the dies she sent were very base, were nice design shapes that you didn't need stamps to go with. So that was kind of cool. But there were some sets that did have stamps with them. So there, that's cut out. I thought I was going to pause it, but I did that so quick that I don't need to. And then for our background, this is really cool, I think, anyway. Um, we're going to use... A image in lieu of a background so even though I had that 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 feather background which is gorgeous I want to make a background with this stamp and this is really pretty and this is also all these stamps I'm using except for the wood mounted one is from Carmen's Veranda I'm gonna start off with this blue which is uh, well, greeny it's called sea green and I'm kind of getting it in the middle we're gonna be doing this several times so don't get fussy with it because you're gonna have to keep repeating it um, and use a little bit of this lighter blue and we need a dark blue in the, right in the middle right in the eye of the feather and we need some brown and the the spectrum aqua markers there's like a, a like a white band on the end that has the brush tip so there's a little time saving bit of info for you 
Okay, so we've got this inked up pretty good, I think. And ah, breathing on my stamp. And this one will be the focal, the most focal. This is a mega mount. It's another curved mount. But look how pretty that is. That's the thing with these deeply etched stamps. In most of your stamp companies that have been around for a while, their stamps are going to be deeply etched, which is really nice. Um, so I'm going to repeat this again. Um, and it was really funny because my librarian gave me a bunch of, um, oops, I used a different color there, but I'm not going to worry about it. Um, gave me a bunch of stamping magazines and books that were from like probably 2004 to 2009. Um, they were donated and she's like, cause I do the library, the art programs over there. She gave them to me and it was so cool to look at the old stamping techniques that I loved that I've forgotten about. I really loved the, the style of stamping, like when expression magazine was around, um, it was very in depth and there was really cool techniques and so many mixed media things were coming out at that time that I was just so happy to peruse through them. There we go. Oops. Now that, that's all right. Cause there's actually going to be a background going on there. So I'm not going to worry about it. So what I'm going to do now is ink it up a few more times and fill in this area. And then we'll be, be back to finish our card. Okay. So I stamped the background. Now I want to trim it down a little bit because it's got these perforations on the edges. Cause it was printer, you know, four by six photo paper. So I'm just going to trim off those perforations and my background is not perfect, but we're going to put so many layers on that, you know, Hey, it's a great way to practice your background techniques on a card like this. Cause we're adding so much to it. All right. Just cutting those perforations right off there. And then I'm going to use color dusters because that's a thing with the, uh, the glossy cardstock. If you're using regular glossy cardstock, it blends really well. Your ink will blend really well. But if you're using photo paper, it does not blend very well because the ink dries like immediately. Um, glossy cardstock, it dries slowly. So I'm using color dusters, but you can use like any sort of like stippling brush, any soft, well, medium soft type of, um, you know, natural hair brush that you have, like a shaving brush would be perfect. Somebody said, um, now these color dusters are by Judy Kins. I don't know if they're still making them or not, but somebody in the UK said they can get like packs of shaving brushes in their dollar stores or their pound stores. So that was not an accent. What was that? Pound stores? I don't know. It sound like, I don't know what, um, but so, you know, anything like that, oil painting brushes that haven't been used yet, that are big and fluffy, those would work pretty well. I'm doing a little bit of tumbled glass here in the middle. Any dye ink is going to be fine for this guy. So you don't have to go buy distress ink. Use what you have. All right. So now this has got a little bit of a color besides just the plain white, and this is going to go on our card base. I'm going to go ahead and get my adhesive gun. It's been working so good since I shimmed it. Great, great tip guys. All right. So I'm going to stick that down there. And then I've pre-cut some layering items here. Uh, first thing I want to use is this blue layer. So I'm going to stick that down. These are uh, the pattern papers I'm using are from the Taj Mahal stack from Die Cuts with a View. And I like the little mat stacks because they're perfect for a five by seven card. And I don't feel that guilt over cutting into a, um, a full sheet of paper like I do when I'm using, um, when I'm using like a 12 by 12 stack, even though I think the 12 by 12 by 12 stack gets you a better deal, but I also think the mat stacks have a smaller scale. So it's a little bit better for card makers. So I just want to gently set that down see if I can put my, yep, yeah, that'll fit. Okay. I'm just going to press that down. So yeah, I was just using up scraps basically. And I'm going to put, I'm just going to set him there for a second. And I've die cut a few things. Like I had a mistake background here. And so, and it was those feathers, but I didn't want to throw it away. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to, um, I'm going to save that and die cut it. So what I'm going to do is actually figure out where I want my die cuts to go before I, um, glue anything down. Cause before I put the, like on my other card, I put the peacock down first and then everything, I, I had a really hard time getting the, getting my stuff where I wanted it. So I'm going to put these two down here and see how that, I don't want them to stick out cause I want this to fit in the envelope when I'm done. All right. And then I'm going to have another one. What color do I want to use? I like this one. I think put that down there kind of tucked under its, under his tail. Maybe I'll do two. I don't know if I like that gold now that I'm looking at it, but I'm going to, I think I'm going to layer over the, uh, 
the sentiment, so I think that'll be fine. All right, I'm using my fine tip applicator glue here. This card's a little involved. I was surprised it took me this long. I felt like I was, when I was making it last night, it took me a while, but I thought it was more hemming and hawing, but I'm actually, I guess there's actually a lot of work in this one. I'm just going to slide it so it's not peeking over the edge there. And I feel like I need to poke that hole back through my glue applicator. This is um, a Zibit store called Tilly's Bridge. That's where I got this from. She is a viewer, the owner's a viewer, named Barb. She sent me some of these to try after watching me fiddle too much, too many times with uh, with the glue I was using. And they have been such a wonderful little tool to use. All right, I'm just going to kind of set a few things down here and figure out exactly what I want to do. I think I might want to layer that a little bit better. Sometimes it's hard. You've got so many patterns and things going. It's hard to make it all make it all work. I want a little glittery tape there. This is from the dollar store. I'm just gonna peel off the backing there. I feel like it needed a little bit of shine, a little more shine there. I'm thinking that that purple might be a little much. Yeah, maybe I'll just do the green and maybe a brown. If you're cutting, die cutting thin paper, um, instead of like the thicker cardstock, which I had some scraps that were thinner and it didn't want to cut, use a, um, use two sheets and that will help it cut. Now the water pump's probably going to come on. It's probably going to be very loud and obnoxious in a second. I do apologize, but there's nothing I can do about that because it is weekend and my family's home and I love them and it just gets loud here sometimes. So we just have to, we have to deal with that. I actually want a v-notch on that. I'm afraid of my camera shutting off. I really don't have time to edit today, so I want to put this up as one take. A one take wonder. Alright, let me stick some of these down here. I kind of hate to cover up any of the background after I've after I've worked on it, but I do like the layers, so what do you to do, right? And these are, this washi tape here is actually stuff I made with, um, I made it with washi paper scraps and um, an adhesive a Xyron machine because I really liked the patterns and I didn't want to, I hated to use up the sheets of paper so I actually made it into adhesive strips so that I could use it as washi tape and just as a little accent because I like the little hint of gold there. All right. But you thought you were going to be watching me peel adhesive for 20 minutes, didn't you? That one was tricky. Okay, so I've got a, I, oops, I glued that one down, but I messed it up. Okay, so now we're going to use some double-sided adhesive to get our peacocks down there. And I've got that right here. Actually, why don't I pause it while I put the, the adhesive pads on these two items, and we'll be right back. All right, saved us about 30 seconds there, and I'm just going to set him right there. And I'm going to, I'm really not digging that. Maybe a blue one, maybe I'll do a blue feather. I just wasn't loving that. And I'm going to stick this over here in this corner. I think I want him to poking out a little bit more, maybe like that. There we go. I'm going to have to sneak a little glue back there. And I'm going to trim off any hanging over bits. And I got some cool rhinestone stickers from Eyelet Outlet here. And I find that you have to be kind of careful using them because if you go, if, you know, because they are kind of crazy colors and they're obviously plastic rhinestones. So if you use any really weird colors, and there's a water pump, um, you will, it'll look really kind of cheesy. But if you use the same colors, you know, stay in the same colors, so it's tone on tone, it looks less cheesy. And um, one last final touch I want to do, I'm going to put three rhinestones there and I'm going to take a metallic pen to outline all of my different items here. Just go around, outline everything with a metallic pen. You might need to scribble it off from time to time if it gets clogged. And that will finish up the card. And here's a look at the finished card. I want to thank you so much for watching today. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you like these long card making tutorials. Uh, share the video on Pinterest, Facebook, Twitter, and wherever you like to share things. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.